Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to all. To our writers who are with us this evening, thank you all so much for coming and sharing your thoughts and your suggestions to us. Uh, to our staff, uh, thank you for everything that you do for this great organization. I know that some of you will be recognized this evening and we will be happy to celebrate uh, with Mr. Arndt's uh, comments about um, something great that uh, our staff must have done again. Uh, and to our guests that are here, thank you for taking the time uh, to attend our meeting this evening to see how VIA does business. At this time, I will do roll call. Trustee Cedillo? Trustee Marn? Lonely on this end of the evening. <laughs> uh, Trustee Ponick? Trustee Gambetta? Vice Chair Allison? Here. Secretary Harrison? Here. Trustee Thompson? Here. Trustee Pettis? Present. Trustee Bryant? Trustee Morgan? Here. Trustee Moore, you're more than welcome to join us on this side if you get a little lonely. <laughs> At this time, I ask that you join me for a moment of reflection. Thank you. If you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Mr. Arndt, do we have uh, announcements? I think I, I'll do uh, my announcements and reports at this time because we will have an uh, item on the ATD, so okay. I'd like to do that first because we have a number of uh, folks in the audience tonight. Um, first thing I'd like to do is, is um, inform the board that this is the beginning of a new fiscal year and within the, this fiscal year, and I'll turn this way as well, uh, we have implemented employee recognition programs. So each quarter we will have a, a van operator, a bus operator, uh, a technician, mechanic, and administrative staff member recognized, and we'll do that on a, a rotating basis. So each month we'll bring one or two of them forward to the board. So this is our first opportunity to recognize employees under that program. And we're beginning tonight with uh, the operator of the quarter recognition. So our very first bu bus operator of the quarter is Rogelio Dominguez. Please stand if you're here. He's not here. Okay. Uh, well, let me tell you about him anyhow. <laughs> He's been with VIA since 1994, has 17 years of bus operations without a preventable accident. Again, a superlative record, uh, con uh, consistent recipient of many commendations throughout his career, and a solid performer in the VIA bus rodeo. We'll talk about that in just a, a, a moment. Uh, we also have our first van operator, Joyce Gonzalez. Uh, Joyce is not able to join us either. Uh, but she's been with VIA for 27 years and has no preventable accidents since 2002, has received 10 of 11 possible excellent awards, excellence awards, which makes her the single most employees of all the operators with the most wins, and she's received 10 customer commendations just within the past 12 months. Uh, and so she has also won a certificate of merit for 19 years of safe driving. So those will be our two, um, our operator, bus operator, and our van operator, uh, the quarter and we'll try and get them here next month so that we can at least see their faces but let's just give them a hand in their absence right now <laughs> uh, we recently had our annual bus van and maintenance rodeo on october 17th uh, and as i said before our our first operator of the quarter uh, mr dominguez is no stranger to the winter circle and he took home the the gold there as well in the van competition, Jesse Rodriguez took top honors. Jesse, are you here? Right up front, Jesse. He's our van operator. Of the uh, on the maintenance site, Mike Zamora, Mike, stand up. Mike Zamora took first place in, I think, six of seven events, individual events, six of seven. Wow. And he will be joined by Marcos Lopez and Daniel Garcia as our maintenance team. And Daniel Rosas won overall in the Hostlers competition. Daniel here? 
He did a great job. Give him a hand. <laughs> now, we also have a celebrity rodeo, and uh, the same way that our bus operator is no stranger to the winner circle, uh, we're going to uh, honor in absence Trustee Lester Bryant, uh, who was back, uh, has back-to-back -back championships in, the, uh, in that category. He took a top honors, uh, rounding out second place Trustee Mark Harrison and third place local celebrity Hector Ledesma. Mark, I want to give you your, your winner's plaque. Hold on. Oh, well, thank you. I'll give you luster secrets later. <laughs> we'll <laughs> tighten that competition. Uh, the, the, the annual bus van and maintenance rodeo is really kind of the high point for the employees because it gives us an opportunity to honor those people that put the service on the street every day or that really do the business of VIA. So it's one of the most exciting things we do all year. And we have a rodeo, commi uh, rodeo committee that puts in countless hours and lots of hard effort to make that all come off, including uh, this year, again, we had events for the family. They had the best balloon artist that I, I have ever seen. The things that that man could do with balloons was amazing. So I would like to honor our bus dispatcher, Pauline Vasquez. Pauline, I saw you there. <laughs> Pauline's been with VIA for 36 years, and she led the group again this year. And I thank you, Pauline. Are there are other, other committee members, if you'd stand up. Too. There are a few other committee members. I know Alva's there. Okay, <laughs> Alva's there backing her up, right? So thank you guys, because you really made it a special day uh, for the people who are really special to us in this agency, and then for the families as well. So thanks for what, what all of you did. So congratulations to all our winners. Okay, my, um, my next recognition, this is really unusual, um, because in my entire career, I have never had a, an auditor who comes forward and said, I, there's somebody here who's done a fantastic job in an area we audit consistently. You just don't have, hear that that often, and it's extremely pleasing to hear. And so uh, running the inventory, the parts and materials needed to keep our fleet, is a responsibility of our manager of inventory and materials distribution, Henry Barriesa. Henry, are you there? There you are. So. He has enhanced the parts monitoring system by instituting daily cycle counts on high dollar inventory parts, and this has enhanced the process and resulted in direct and indirect improvements in the productivity, efficiency, and cost effectiveness of the fleet and facilities division, and came to the attention of management through audit. And so that's really nearly unheard of. So congratulations, you really scored for us there. Thank you for all you do. Uh, congratulations are in order for our wellness coordinator, Justin Kruger, for securing yet another award for VIA. Justin, Justin, is, there you are. You're not wearing wild pink. <laughs> uh, this time we received a Healthiest Employers Award from the San Antonio Business Journal, an honor intended to celebrate our accomplishments in promoting healthy living for our employees. These efforts are embodied in the VIA Thrive Wellness Program, which is Justin's program. Uh, which encourages VIA employees to engage, to engage in regular exercise, adopt healthier eating habits, learning about specific health issues, and, and improve overall well-being. So Justin, another great job. Also within HR, VIA received, received the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting from the Government Finance Officers Association for our comprehensive annual financial report for FY14. In order to receive this award, VIA had to meet high standards of program, including demonstrating a constructive spirit of full disclosure. So I'd like to recognize our manager of employee services and benefit, Orlego, or Orlando Gallego. All right. Congratu congratulations to VIA team members who recently graduated from the San Antonio National Forum for back Black Public Administrative Administrators Professional Development Institute. Man, that's a name, isn't it? Earlier this month. 
Transportation Secretary Mona Hazel and Fleet and Facilities Administrator Assistant Jennifer Sarold. Please stand and be recognized. There they are, front and center. They completed an eight-month program with UTSA College of Public Policy, which includes more than 40 hours of instruction from graduate-level UTSA professors and completion of a capstone project. So on top of doing their day-to-day -day work, which is much appreciated. So thank you and congratulations. Another achievement we can be proud of for this month, we set a new record for VIA Trans ridership. Uh, in September, we set one record. In October, we surpassed that record to a number of 4,466 trips in one day. This is a significant accomplishment indicative of the efficiency of scheduling and dispatching and maintaining zero denials through that all. So Sylvia Castillo is our manager of paratransit operations. Sylvia, you and your crew, thank you so much. Okay, I'd like to introduce a new a member of our staff this evening joining us for his first board meeting and his first day of work is Leroy Alloway. Leroy, where I saw you come in. Leroy has 14 years of experience working in the greater San Antonio region with community leaders, neighborhood and civic groups, selected officials. He is the new director of local government and community relations. He came to us most immediately from the Alamo area MPO where he oversaw planning and public involvement program. He received his Master's of Public Administration from the University of Texas at San Antonio. And in his free time, he is involved in Rotary International and currently working on his doctorate degree. Uh, but he may not have any more free time, unfortunately. Sorry about that, Leroy. <laughs> Graduate of Leadership San Antonio class and served on the steering committee of Leadership San Antonio as well, and was selected as one of San Antonio Business Journal's top 40 under 40 rising stars. So thank you. Welcome aboard. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Ooh, a great day. Uh, yeah. VIA's 2015 United Way Pay Setter campaign was a tremendous success. Uh, way overachieved what I was hoping for, actually. Together, VIA employees contribu contributions reached a record of $144,000, which represents a 22% increase over last year's campaign. It's also the sixth consecutive year in which VIA employees have raised over $100,000 over the course of that campaign. We have a, a large committee that's uh, a part of that, but co-chairing at the, at the management level is Marcus Peoples, who is uh, in, I think, Southern California, conducting a peer review on behalf of APTA. And, but here tonight is Administrative Assistant Jess, Jessica Contreras. Jessica, we, where are you? Jessica. So. So Jessica does all the work, just so everybody knows. Thank you. 22% increase is a tremendous success. Um, the American Public Transit Association presented VIA with an Ad Wheels Award at their 2015 APTA annual meeting. The award was presented for the promotion of our 20th anniversary of VIA Youth Art Contest. Uh, that is, the Ad Wheels Award are presented by APTA to acknowledge creative excellence of member public transportation systems and business members in advertising, communications, and marketing. Our promotion of the 20th Youth Art Contest was selected first place award in the category of special events. We are honored to be recognized on the national stage for, for a program that has been very warmly embraced on a local level. And so I want to thank our community relations coordinator, Jerry Ann Jones, and our graphics design illustrator, Jeff Ramirez, for their work specifically this year. Jerry Ann, you, every month we have something to, uh, to recognize you for. Jeff is, Jeff is right over here with the camera, just so everybody knows. So congratulations on that award. At the end of September, the Propane Education Research Council and Metro Magazine presented VIA with a top user of Propane Autogas Award. It sat on my desk for the last month, but it has Gary Glasscock's name on it. How do you like that? And so I'm going to hand Gary, Gary that award at this point. So as you know, Gary has been instrumental in working on alternative fuel program for the, uh, for the agency, our paratransit fleet, 
is 100 percent propane and we are working toward converting our inf entire fleet to compressed natural gas. So thank you, Gary. Uh, I just want to highlight, and again, Mr. Bryant is, is absent tonight, but he has taken on several uh, significant roles at the national level. He was selected by the American Public Transit, uh, Transportation Association to serve on the National Organization's Board of Directors. He was, his selection was announced at APTA's annual business meeting and election of officers, and he joins representatives from across the country as one of 106 total members on the APTA Board of Directors. He was also selected as a secretary of the APTA Transit Board Members Committee, and he serves on the APTA Foundation Board of Directors. And so we are very honored that one of VIA's uh, board members is operating at a national level and keeping us very well connected. And he can hear it. He's in Dallas uh, representing VIA at a, a transit conference there. So let's clap so he can hear it. <laughs> One last award, all right? Okay. I want to offer congratulations to our champion and our board chair, Hope Andrade, who received a public service award from the Friends of the American Latino Museum on October 24th. The award was presented at the 2015 American Latino Influencers Award Ceremony at the St. Anthony Hotel to honor the accomplishments and influence of Latinos as part of an effort to create an American Latino history branch of the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, D.C., a, a very uh, noble effort there. And I can't think of a person who is more deserving of being recognized than Hope Andrade. So congratulations. Report. And I will rest. We expect that every month. <laughs> <laughs> and to all those that have been recognized, you know, for I will share with you that uh, you make us proud every day. Okay. We're, as your board, we're very proud to be part of this VIA family. Uh, but this evening, you make us even more. Okay. So congratulations for all your hard work. Uh, we love the fact that, uh, you know, you, you keep making news. Uh, and so congratulations, and again, we're all very proud of you. Uh, let it be known that Trustee Cedillo um, has um, come in and that uh, Trustee Bryant and Trustee Gambetta are attending the rail conference and, in Dallas. And uh, Trustee Ponick. And Trustee Ponick. So that's a reason for their absence. And if I didn't mention at the beginning, I did call to order the regular VIA board meeting. Well, the ATD. The ATD? Yes. I'm in the wrong agenda. Okay. I got so excited <laughs> about all the celebrations at the ATD <laughs> board meeting. All right. Moving on to agenda item number three, uh, consent agenda. Do we have a, a motion? Motion for approval. Second. Okay. We have a motion, a second. Any further discussion or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries. Agenda item number four, potential uses of advanced transportation district funds. Mr. Buchanan. Oh, you're here already. I am. All right. Good evening, Madam Chair and members of the board. Um, this evening, I'd like to have a discussion um, about some of the ongoing discussion out there about the advanced transportation district and some of the conversations we anticipate over the, the next uh, several months um, with maybe some possible um, other uses for the advanced transportation um, dollars. So just a, a quick recap, um, the Advanced Transportation District, a quarter, um, one cent sales tax um, divided up amongst the three entities or four entities um, into three different pies. Um, VIA gets 50% of that, um, City of San Antonio 25% and TxDOT Bear County uh, another 25%. Over the last 10 years, you can see here that the revenues that are generated through the ATD um, have reached uh, approximately over $61 million um, per year. Um, over the inception of the, uh, of the tax, um, VIA has been the recipient of about $247 million, and you can see the other two entities, about $123.5 million apiece um, since inception. So what do the entities use those funds for? Um, VIA's use of the funds, um, we did fund a super street project. Uh, those are the super streets up on 281 um, as part of the 281 project up there to help mobility up in that area. Um, but a lot of those dollars go to our express and limited stop bus service. Um, almost all of those dollars um, go to those services, along with our Primo service. Um, so out there putting, putting buses on the street. Um, they, the money is also used to back some bonds associated with the capital program, the Smart Move Capital Program, 
um, as we move forward and build those capital programs. And then some transit technology, advanced um, technology, traffic signal integration, AVL system, allow us to see the buses out there. And there was a starlight service that was discontinued in 2009. That was a late night type guarantee home service. And the van pole service that is here in the community also is partially funded or some funds come out of the, the via ATD. This is just kind of a map of where the, uh, where the ATD routes are. You can see Primo there. You can see the express routes coming in from, from our park and rides. The looper service is on there. So those are the routes that um, every single day we use ATD dollars to put those buses on the street. The city of San Antonio has utilized their portion of the ATD to work on streets, sidewalks, um, traffic signals, some bus pads, vehicles detection, and some advanced transportation uh, related to the movement of, of, of cars and motor vehicles through the streets. ADA ramps is also another, another thing associated with the city of San Antonio's um, portion of the funds. And then TxDOT Bear County, they have done several projects. Uh, I will also remind you that this is the pot that needs to be leveraged. So you can see here um, that uh, basically a three to one um, total, the $270 million of ATD funds you saw there um, has leveraged about $863 million of additional funds to bring about $1.1 billion worth of transportation improvements um, to the community moving forward. So this is a great use of those funds to leverage those funds moving forward. So there are a couple questions that staff has been asked to uh, think about and uh, moving forward um, in the conversation. And it is what type of service improvements could be funded with additional ATD revenue. And BIA does have on the book some additional Primo and Express services as part of our, our long-range plan. I'll remind you that these are our existing Express routes. Um, once again, from the outlying park and rides, these are basically our commuter type services, um, moving people um, into the core from the outer areas. We do have, as part of the capital program, I'll remind you, several park and rides, the Alamo Ranch park and ride, I-10 park and ride, Stone Oak park and ride that you awarded um, last board meeting. And so we will need to extend those services out to those. So that is part of our five-year capital program and operating plan moving forward. And then a, a little bit the Primo service. We have the existing Primo line um, that was opened in 2012. Um, 6,200 average daily passengers on that line. And then we have the Southwest Corridor, which is planned to go into operations in late 2017. This is funded as part of the five-year capital program um, moving forward. But there's also a set of projects that are currently unfunded, and these are possible projects that could be funded um, through the use of ATD dollars. Um, they include a San Pedro possible Primo line, a West and East Commerce line, so an East-West line, um, for Primo, uh, Pleasanton, and a Broadway service, so up the, up the uh, Austin Highway corridor uh, moving forward. So these lines, if we were to run them in the Primo type of service, the 10 to 12 minute headways, um, we would require about a, an additional 163,000 um, man hours, service hours um, annually. That translates into about an additional 16 to 18 million dollars per year um, for our budget to put that service on the street. And Brian, that is the operating cost. That does not include any of the capital cost or fleet cost associated with Yeah, that, that is correct. And I'll recap that at the very end. Most of the, uh, the dollars I'll show you here today are purely operating costs. They don't necessarily achieve the uh, capital cost needed to actually build the infrastructure associated with it. And then um, if we were to implement that full level Primo service, um, we could look at 10 to 12 minute service to about 73,000 of our existing riders, or about 56% of the system would be covered with 10 to 12 minute service. So I think that's a, a pretty good goal moving forward and one of the reasons we're looking at a, a primo network um, that we're showing here. There's another question that uh, is kind of hanging out there that um, is kind of being asked, and that is what can we do to regular line service enhancements? Um, these are um, enhancements that may not be able to be funded with the ATD dollars, but could be funded with additional dollars uh, moving forward. So what type of changes could be made to regular line service to make it more um, enhance the customer appeal um, to our service? So I'm going to show you a series of maps here. The series of maps are both peak service, so that's our, our early morning and evening commute type, type service, and then our regular service, off-peak service. So our system, 60-minute, um, during the peak, these are routes that come every hour um, out there. You can see they're on the fringes of the, of the service area. 
um, outside 410 mainly. Um, so these are buses that arrive once per hour on our network. And then um, you can see it starts to fill in, 30 minute service inside 410, um, moving forward up the I-10 corridor. There's the 20 minute service, the looper comes into play, um, the express routes. And then 15 minute service, and then there's the 10 minute service um, of the Primo up and down Fred Road to the medical center area. So if you were to lay that all over, about 28% of our system route miles have 60 minute service during the peak period uh, of major travel. And there you can see the breakdown um, off to the side. So off peak, this is non um, commute type hours. You can see a lot more hour service uh, associated with the system out there. It's, it's come inside 410 uh, on several routes. You can see the 30 minute service um, fills in, the 20 minute service, and then the 15, and then the Primo still operates at 10. So if you look at that holistically, during off peak, almost 50% of our system runs at 60 minute service. Um, so um, we feel that there are opportunities there for improvement. Um, uh, we feel a system um, would be really attractive to customers if we could get that 60 minutes down to 30 minutes. So could we cut that in half? And, and what would that take? So we answered that question. Uh, if we were to move to 30 minute service uh, on the system, so that would be a bus would arrive every 30 minutes all across the system. Um, 35 routes would need to be touched. Um, additional service would need to be added. That would be approximately 132,000 service hours and about 22 more vehicles would be needed to add to the fleet. Um, 13 to 15 million dollars of additional operating um, on top of the primo number um, that I showed you earlier and about approximately another 11 million dollars in fleet and once again this doesn't account for any any type of street work or station stops or anything like that moving forward. So it is, it is, a, it is a cost, it is a cost that is greater than the ATD um, dollars um, that we're looking at here. So conclusions right now are ATD funding can be part of the, uh, part of the solution but it is not um, all of the solution to kind of where we want to get to with the 30 minute service and the express network and the BRT network um, that we'd like to have here in San Antonio. Um, the dollar figure for that is somewhere in the 29 to 33 million dollars of more money needed annually um, moving forward. And then additional capital needs would obviously need to be programmed and money found for those and that would include the additional fleet that would be need to be purchased. Um, route improvements and technology, there will probably need to be some improvements along the street, um, upgraded traffic signals, upgrade of the traffic signal control equipment um, to talk to the bus. And then support facilities. So as we add this fleet and we add the, um, these abilities, we'll have to take a hard look at our support, our support facilities and make sure that we can keep up with this type of growth and this type of service um, out there on the street. Um, staff is working with the city of San Antonio and all of our partners through the Vision 2040 and the SA Tomorrow. Um, as part of that program, there's an implementation plan. And so what you saw here today is part of that conversation, um, what additional dollars and what type of service could those additional dollars provide if we were to move forward in the implementation plan. And um, that's what staff is working with and some of the conversations you'll, you'll hear over the next several months um, with the city of San Antonio moving forward. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions about the ATD and kind of our vision hmm. moving forward. Members, any questions? <clears throat> yes, yeah. Trustee Martin. Having more frequent buses, what would be the occupancy rate of the buses and would we somehow implement a smaller bus to be more frequent instead of using the, the buses we have now? You could look at that. Um, what we would like to see is if we operate more frequently, we would hope that we would attract more riders to the system. So we would hope to get higher occupancy on those buses moving forward. If you remember, one of the uh, things coming out of our long range plan survey was reliability and frequency or made the transit system attractive. So we would hope that providing more frequent trips would attract more people to the system. Trustee Cedillo? Yes. You, you mentioned on the uh, on the listing about how the how each entity uh, contributes or is or is taking the money. You mentioned that the city is using 24 positions. Do you know the salary ranges of those positions and what specifically they are used for, related to ATD? And then if there's a comparison for VIA staff as well. 
Yeah, I do not know exactly what those positions, but we were told they were to support like the traffic signal operations, the improvements associated with the traffic signal network, the streets and, and, and things like that. I don't know exactly what they are. Do you have an equivalent number of staff members that are being paid out of uh, via ATD funds from the VIA staff? So our service would include an operator to operate the bus mm -hmm. and uh, ancillary support staff associated with putting that service on the street. So it's a actually utilizing the dollars for that service at that time. So it's not like a three steps down the line kind of. There is some overhead uh, allocated to some of those some of those that, those dollars to provide that service out there. And and th does this, has the city provided then a breakdown of all of the elements that they are funding specifically li like the the way it's done with the county? The city has only provided what I showed here this evening that the listing of the of the different types of scopes of works that they have that they have done. So every year it's kind of, they, they, they do a new budget every year. That's correct. What they get. That's correct. But we don't know what they're. Yeah, uh, we'd have to look in their, their city document, their fun, funny document. We can pull that out. It may be they're, part of the presentation. That's they're preparing out. that list. Yeah. Uh, as we go forward to the, uh, the traffic, the transportation technology and utility, utility committee. committee. But isn't that something that they should be providing to the city council during the budget session where they would have that one sheet of paper that says, how I'm using specific funds because they have to do that for, for federal funding and for other funds they you would think that they would also have it for the ATD funds as well I just know that for that committee that they are charged with providing that information so we should have that information as part of that presentation we, we will ask for that information yeah. to see if we can receive it members any other questions I have one follow-up yes question. this board is also the ATD board yes the via employees are also the ATD employees would the VIA audit department also be the ATD audit department? And could that be something that would be audited, the use of those funds or, or how they're or, or for, for positions? Who, who checks the to see that those monies are being used in the way that they're supposed to be used? I think that's the root of the question. Right, I understand that, yeah. And is it an oversight that we would have in any way? Since we're looking at you, uh, Ms. Elger, I guess that uh, <laughs> see, that my, <laughs> see my starting point is that the the of those three three pieces of money, the part that stays with VIA, you know, of course, in the budget process, you see that the part that is designated county tech dot, all those projects are approved by the ATD board and then move forward. The projects for the city of San Antonio do not; those dollars don't come through us, other than passing through and the ATD board has no uh, responsibility or require they have no requirement because for this right right so the, is it an honor system we just assume that they're going to use the money for the project yes. <laughs> the statute requires the agency to The statute requires the agency to follow the statutory mandate. So there is uses outlined in the statute for the city to utilize the money. Okay. If you'd like further explanation on the statutory requirements, I can explore that with you further. Trustee Martin, do you need do you need further? No, I, I understand the situation as it exists now. Okay. I just want to make sure that if there's an oversight, as the chairman of the audit department of right. VIA, and hence ATD, is there an oversight that 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 we should that we are responsible for, and or is it just they get a check and whatever they want to do with it is whatever they decide? I mean, who I, I'm sure that they have to follow the law. Who's the policeman? who make sure that they're following the law? Or is there? Statutorily, yes. there are provisions that outline how those dollars... Oh, I, I fully understand this. And when I came here this evening, there were signs that said 45 on San Pedro. Mm -hmm. I understand. Someone pulled me over. But who pulls over 
the but as a board, yeah. as a board of ATD, don't we have that authority? Okay. All right. Please right. do. Because uh, yeah. I think it would, sure it would help to it. clarify right. uh, our role in, in that. Okay. Sure. Members, anything else? One question? quick question, Madam Chair. Uh, Brian, on the timing of the discussions with the City of San Antonio, is that before this calendar year ends, next year, what, just generally? Yeah, we, we were informed here recently that that may occur as soon as beginning next week, next but, week, right. but um, still yet to be scheduled, but I do believe it will occur this calendar year. Um, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the briefing is scheduled right now in December, That's right. Uh, but they are looking at maybe advancing it into November. So one way or the other It'll happen this would year. be this year. And so how does that relate with respect to the timing of the LGAC action? The LGAC meeting is Thursday. in two days. Thursday. So and it would so be. So how does that request impact the LGAC request, or does it? I don't believe it does. I mean, we've had some discussion about about the impact of the of the fair discussion on the overall budget, but it, but it does not impact it directly. I would think it would, but you guys are going to the meeting, so I'll defer to you on that one. We're going to be asking you to join us at that meeting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a question. Yes. It, it, we've heard uh, that uh, there are issues uh, regarding our frequency. Mm -hmm. So if um, if the community uh, expects us to increase our frequency, and uh, what we're saying is we we can do that, but this is how much more it's going to cost us. Mm -hmm. uh, is the city able to designate some of their funding for this? Um, we have had discussions with the city about the ATD and other possible funding, but nothing has been um, ironed out. But there's no reason that they couldn't allocate additional funding from all, any revenue source to be if they so elect. So that uh, that discussion has started, it and has. we are exploring that. We are. Okay, good. And you Absolutely. will keep us updated uh, on that, because I think that this could be a great solution uh, for this community to meet the needs of its riders yes. uh, with more frequency. Good. Thank you. That would be a great way to increase ridership. And, Absolutely. And, and uh, also, the city has, uh, the, in the previous discussion, the presentation to the uh, the B session at the committee was going to be by city staff only, and we are now having a joint presentation. So okay. that's a positive step forward. Yeah. Good. And I believe that uh, the only way we can do things in the future is through partnerships. So this would be a great partnership where we all come together and, and make the best use of these funds. Great. Anything else? That's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Members, any other questions before Mr. Okay, good. No action is needed, right? It was no. just discussion. All right. Um, anything on uh, agenda item number five or six? Ms. Elder? No? Okay. All right. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Second. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 The ATD regular board meeting of October 27th is hereby adjourned. All right. A little, a little no. We're now moving on to um, calling to order the regular via board meeting of October 27th. Mr. Art, do we have a CO no, report? No, no additional information. Okay. It was all included in the ATD Correct. report. All Correct. right. Uh, agenda item number four, citizens to be heard. Tracy Harris. Yes, Tracy Harris. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tracy Harris, and I'm, I'm sorry I can't stand because I have an injured foot, but I would like to speak to you about something that um, has 
has recently been going on in several of the different buses and at, at bus stops um, when uh, people that are disabled um, are trying to get on the buses or get off the buses, uh, people um, assault them, they treat them very disrespectfully, they get treated like the bus drivers just don't care, you know. Um, I feel I've been disabled since I was seven years old, and I feel this is a very, very disrespectful thing for us as customers of VIA. And, you know, I have many friends that speak to me about the officers, security officers, um, the bus drivers, you know, they, they just act like we'll do what we want when we want, you know. And I really do feel like when the people, um, if, if they're disabled, just because you can't see that they're disabled, just because you can't tell, that does not mean they're not disabled. And that does not mean that you should treat them with disrespect or hatred because they did, they, we deserve just as much respect as any other person who walks on that bus, especially since we pay for it. And I was actually assaulted when I was on the bus. The bus, the bus driver, they did not do nothing about it. The security guards did not do nothing about it. They gave me a false report. They did not take me to a hospital. Now I have to wear glasses. Thanks, thanks to the person. You, you know, this is this is totally uh, irresponsible, and it makes Via look very disresponsible. And the people who are disabled feel very ashamed of Via because th you're not doing anything about this. And it's not really necessary because I continue to say we deserve just as much respect as any other man or woman that walks on that bus because we pay to ride the bus just like they do. Thank you for hearing my words. Thank you very much. David Thompson. Hi, I'm here to uh, talk about changing the policy. Uh, I've seen so many discrimination uh, against the people that ha are handicapped. When they see a person walk up, they have a walker, a cane, or any other physical problems like a, a broken leg or, or they're limping up to go up to the bus, the bus drivers should be automatically kneeling that bus, lowering the bus. But does the bus drivers do it? No. And then there's people that have shopping carts. And they, guess you quote, the policy is you have to request to have the bus kneeled. It should be an automatic kneeling of the bus. If the bus driver sees a person with problems, then they should kneel it. They should not have to request this. this. So y'all need to change this policy of not uh, doing this service. It's a form of discrimination and so I'm not appreciative of uh, via, via discriminating against the handicap. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Anna Katie. Hello, everyone. My name is Anna Katie, and I'm a volunteer with the group Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. My organization supports responsible gun ownership, and we believe respect for the Second Amendment can go hand in hand with common sense gun reforms, which are supported by the ma majority of Americans, and data show help reduce gun violence in the United States. Our organization is a nonpartisan grassroots movement, and our volunteer moms from across Texas lobbied lawmakers and testified against the open carry of handguns at the Capitol during the 84th legislative session earlier this year. The gun lobby is attempting to bring guns into our daily lives into places that they don't belong, 
and the open carry of handguns is an extension of that. Proponents of open carry argue that such a practice is an effective personal and public security measure. While we have no hard evidence whatsoever from any state that the open carry of loaded firearm actually deters crime, we have plenty of evidence that open carry creates a landscape where fear, anxiety, and intimidation are things that are forced, that we are forced to tolerate. I'm sure you're aware that gun extremists in Texas make a point of long arm open carry demonstrations that regularly incite fear and op and to ordinary people moving through their daily lives. One of, these e one of these efforts resulted in threats towards the state lawmaker, after which the state had to install panic buttons in, st in, law in offices of lawmakers. We think it's worthwhile um, reminding everyone that the public does not have panic buttons and that open carry will inevitably cause panic among regular citizens. During the legislative session, the majority of Texans spoke out against open carry. But I think it's important to note that it wasn't just the average Texan. The vast majority of law enforcement also oppose open carry for various reasons, but primar primarily among them, uh, the fact ha having that openly displayed weapons on the scene of when responding to an active shooter situation is confusing, dangerous, and time consuming for law enforcement. We also heard from military veterans who said they expected to see openly carried weapons while in a war zone, but were distressed to think they would encounter them in the same, uh, in the same course of their daily lives back home. Some will argue that open carry is only extended to those with handgun licenses here in Texas, which is true, but they fail to point out that Texas has reciprocity agreements with 43 other states, many of whom have significantly lower licensing standards than those established by the state of Texas. For example, in, India, in Indiana and in, in Alabama, um, they have no training or testing requirements at all. In other states such as Florida and Utah, they grant licenses from other states uh, for residents of other states. The inevitable consequence of this is that there will be, quote, licensed Texans openly carrying handguns who do not meet the licensing requirements of people who can carry in Texas. Heather Rosenquist. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi there. Uh, my name is Heather Rosenquist, and I'm also a volunteer with Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. Along with other members of our organization, I lobbied, I called, I emailed and tweeted lawmakers and tracked multiple times to the Capitol up and back uh, to fight open carry this session. You probably know that nearly two-thirds of Texans oppose open carry. The law enforcement oppose it and that Texas legislature passed it into law anyway, making Texas the most populous state in the U.S. to allow it. The only argument the proponents had in favor of open carry is that it may be a crime deterrent. However, there is no evidence that actually exists to support this belief. Um, however, uh, we think that Texans um, think that a gun will provide them a form of protection if they need a gun to provide a sense of protection, then the existing concealed carry can do that. So Austin Police Chief Art Acevedo, Harris County Sheriff Adrian Garcia, Houston Police Chief Charles, Charles McKellen, and Arlington Police Chief Will Johnson all either actively testified against open carry or made public statements in opposition to its passage. So we think this is a very important and um, you know, issue and shouldn't be overlooked. Law enforcement opposed open carry for a variety of reasons, among them the fact that it presents real challenges in ensuring public safety. So it's forcing law enforce enforcement to ask, does this person have a license? Is he a felon? Does this person pose a risk to others in the immediate environment? When it comes to the prospect of open carry on public transportation, who will ask these questions on an everyday via bus ride? Is that going to be the passengers? How about the bus driver? Uh, it's an additional and, frankly, a frightening burden that the average citizen should not be forced to endure. So I'm going to try to speed up. Uh, we know from polling done during the legislative session that nearly two-thirds of Texans oppose open carry and 75% of Texas police chiefs oppose it. 
But we know opposition to open carry is likely even stronger here in Bear County. Just last week, Bear County District Attorney Nicola Hood expressed his objection to open carry. And although Texas lawmakers passed open carry over the wishes of two-thirds of Texans, we know that Bear County lawmakers and the views of Bear County constituents and via, via bus uh, customers overwhelmingly opposed. Of the nine state lawmakers representing San Antonio that voted, seven opposed and only two supported it. So open carry creates an environment which moms feel we have to make additional assessments about our children's safety. We, want to, we don't want to be responsible for threat assessments when we take our children to the museum on the VIA bus. Moms have enough to worry about in raising our kids. We don't expect to have to be afraid that openly armed person next to us might have a violent temperament. So Jack if it's anything Finger. within your power to prohibit open carry, we please ask you to do so. Thanks. Thank you very much. Jack Finger. Well, Madam Chair and other members of the board, my, my name is Jack M. Finger. Speaking of open carry, I think she may have something here. Maybe we should get rid of the Second Amendment, too, there. Yeah. If only our buses were gun-free zones. I don't think you would have had that shooting that you had last November on Route Number 90. Oh, wait a second. We, our buses are gun-free zones. Oh, I forgot. Yes, uh, maybe, you know, come to think of it, I wonder if, if that shooter had, had seen a certain number of the passengers with their open-carry guns. I wonder if maybe he would have thought twice, do you think? Hmm. And regarding our drivers on the buses, uh, someone complained about that. I haven't noticed any real discourtesy among our drivers towards our handicapped, challenged people there, uh, with a few notable exceptions, of course. But still, uh, in fact, it's the handicapped people who I've noticed don't want to fold up their carts on the bus at times, thereby making it hard for, for the rest of us to get through the aisleways there. The, uh, the frequency uh, that you, subject you mentioned uh, earlier well, I'm glad you see you're looking at uh, increasing a, a few, few more buses along the roads there. I would, you say it's going to cost a number of millions of dollars for it. Well, well I would think that uh, the, uh, the rate increases that uh, y'all have uh, approved uh, last time just might be able to pay for that. <sighs> yes. Also, uh, the HOV lanes that you're planning around Highway 281 north of 1604, I don't know if anybody's bothered telling you, but the HOV lanes don't work. No, they haven't. I mean, any city around has used it to take a look at it for yourself whether there is really that much use of it or, and to see if there, how many violators there are among the, uh, the passenger cars that, that make use of that compared to, to uh, uh, the, the, the proper number of uh, uh, vehicles and buses that, that, that make use of it. Yeah, it's uh, and, and that HUV lane that you you're planning for the 281. It goes, we some of us looked at that. It goes way out to the middle of nowhere. I mean, who lives out there? Uh, have y'all taken a closer look at that? I mean, y'all had to have heard some of the complaints about that. See, the uh, another problem I have. Bus drivers are allowed to be early on the routes. I didn't know this. I, I was stranded late at night, 1 a.m. in the morning, when a bus driver arrived at his point about three, minute, three or four minutes early, and I missed him because of it. I was stranded for several hours there. They're allowed to be uh, five minutes early. Now, how can we, the riders, trust via when they are that early. Ferris Hodge. About time you had a change in your policy. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is this thing on? Okay. Uh, somebody said about the bus driver carrying guns. Yeah, they carry guns. We see them. They got their big purse, uh, 
satchel or whatever. We know it. They know it. Maybe y'all don't know it. Y'all don't ride the bus. Y'all really don't care. Now, uh, District 1 Councilman, I was over there the other day, and he said uh, a lot of the via policemen in the city is harassing the citizens. I said, yeah, what's going on? And he said, well, we're not going to tolerate that. Uh, they got a law saying uh, that you can't sit here over two hours, or you can't sit at the VIA Information Center over two hours. This lady, 80 or 90 years old, it was 100 degrees a few months ago. So security told us she had to leave 30 minutes or 45 minutes, then come back, and she can sit another two hours. It was almost 100 degrees. I was sweating. And y'all need to change that old stupid policy that y'all have. Two years ago, 4th of July, I had some fried chicken, and it sure was good. But anyway, make a long story short, I sat down with paperwork and stuff, writing, and uh, security threw everybody out of the, uh, cent over there by Fredericksburg Road. I mean, everybody, from the babies to the newborn to the senior citizen, threw them all out. And then uh, he said, uh, you got to go. I said, go where? He said, you been, you loitering. I said, man, you must be crazy. The loitering law in the past been three or four hours. You could always go to the information center and sit there when it's hot, cold, listen to your radio, uh, cell phone, or whatever. And nobody bought it unless you was fighting or cussing or something like that. And nobody wasn't doing it. I mean, everybody got through it out. I was the last one. And the guy came up to me and said, you got to go. And I said, go where? And uh, he put his hand on his gun. You know, I, I, I don't go for that. So I said, first thing, you better take your hand off your gun because, you know, uh, you're not going to do that in front of me. And he said, well, you still got to go. I said, give me your name and badge and all that. I gave it to Via. Via didn't do anything. He said, our policy is, is two hours. And anybody in there over two hours, we're going to throw them out. And that, that is wrong. That is as wrong as can be. You have cold weather. You have hot weather. I missed the bus last week because they had something going downtown at the convention center or wherever it was. And I had to wait another 45 minutes for the bus downtown. You know, and y'all need to be going out to the game bangles and stuff like that. They were smoking dope and fighting and cussing and everything. And the police came and started arresting them, you know, stuff like that. I, go, I can go out there right now. And another hour, they're going to be down there, the game bangles. And nobody's doing nothing about the game. The girls are just as tough as the boys. They, are, they might be tough. This guy called this girl the beat, B word. She went and got her brass knuckles, and she beat them down to the ground. Had a knife on one end and brass knuckles. She said, pick that so-and-so up and drag him across the street. They picked him up, dragged him across the street and dropped him. The next day, she was the head of the game. He was part of the game. And I want you all to leave us alone. We're not bought nobody. We had four businessmen three weeks ago standing up talking. And they said, Via told us to have you all be removed from the bus stop. Damon and he said, well, Mason. we haven't did anything. How can you all remove us from the bus stop? Well, anyway. Yeah, eventually, y'all going to get sued if y'all don't change that policy to three or four hours, especially if you're not bothering anybody. Something's wrong. Well, let me get off my bandwagon. I didn't get to sing my song tonight, but that's okay. Uh, Chairman Winnon Rod 8, President Art, via trustees, meeting stages, it is I, Damian Mason. It's taken me a little while to figure out where to start the composing this diatribe in light of everything that has happened this month. There's a transportation forum hosted in Leon Valley on, on the 8th of October 2015 by Senator Jose Menendez that sought to prosecute the important conversation about transportation that definitely needs to take place. Of the several rates within it is mass transit in which I'm definitely most interested. With, with which I'm most disappointed because President Art and Chairman Winnon Rod have forgotten that the whole purpose of that forum was to listen to the public. The recent response letter from the citizen to be heard confirms my suspicion that this is not being accidentally forgotten, but is intentionally being ignored. You wish for be a metropolitan to be a multiple trend asset to the, the community? I find that crowd calling very difficult to believe. The September 2015 response letter made quite clear that being rather question my sanity than to face the fact that it has a mainline trans operator on its payrolls has a fairly picture of the service route he has to prosecute. It also made quite clear that in a very expensive mainline motor code barreling down a public interstate highway as a 30,000 pound missile with real people on it because of that said mainline transit operator at the helm is either not a priority for VIA or is a necessary cost for some obscure strategic or tactical objective, the detailed identity of which eludes me at the moment. I'm certainly scratching my hair here, VIA. You're quick to fire a mainline transit operator that T-bones a motor vehicle while executing a right turn across the bow of the coach instead of going after the violator in court and relocating the bus up so this does not keep happening. Still, when a mainline transit operator found not to be quite ready for prime time, you're at a person getting gas like the messenger and then act on the message. 
You claim to desire a 21st century transportation network within both, both within San Antonio and its outlying neighbors. Still, you're persecuting slave the messenger who gives you the counsel to do exactly that. You spout out this rhetoric about giving people a choice about how to get around. Still, you ignore the necessity of making private auto travel a huge headache so that there's less automobiles on the road and less need to build and, make, and upgrade more roads. Who in his right mind would want to advise the patronizing public agency who behaves in that manner? Thank you. Daniel Dijak. Uh, thank you and good evening. My name is Daniel Dijak. I come from the Center for Healthcare Services, Veterans Project, and the Veterans Treatment Court. I was here last month and I brought a proposal for it on reduced fares for homeless veterans that are working with uh, veterans organizations. Is it on? <laughs> working with homeless organ uh, veterans organizations to reduce the fares so we can uh, get more vets uh, the benefits of VIA. Uh, the, pr the project, the, the proposal I Put in. I, I didn't get any word back directly after the meeting. I spoke to a manager of accessibility to VIA services, and he said they would study it. Um, I kept communications open uh, through emails uh, through the month, and uh, I called last week to find that the program right now is not covered by the current VETS program that VIA uses, and so we're going to need to look for other ways to have it happen. Uh, the reason I came in today was to, to find out if there's any more information, if it was actually, you know, uh, addressed on the, on the paperwork, I guess, uh, but also to push forward the idea that a reduced fare of 50 percent via loses no money because we're able to get instead of 10 tickets, 20 tickets. The amount of money coming into via becomes the same. But if you look at it as 10 tickets that we're giving away free, then you say, oh, I can't do that. I don't look at it as free tickets. We're working hard to reduce homeless, so we've got about six organizations in San Antonio that are working hard day and night trying to reduce homelessness for the veterans. Uh, today in a staff meeting the word 22 was broken, or the number 22 was brought up because was, there are 22 suicides a day by veterans and many of them are by homeless. And what does VA have to do with that? Well, getting to and from services, getting to and from the VA hospital, it makes a difference. It's a, it's a start. It's a start. It's a, a foot in the right direction. So um, I'm asking that the board continue to look at this proposal, continue to work on it. Uh, the, the sooner the better, the faster we do it, the less vets we lose. Thank you. Thank you very much. Madam Chairwoman, there are no more citizens to be heard. Thank you very much. All right, moving on to agenda item number five, our consent agenda. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion second. Any further discussion or comments? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed nay. Motion carries. <coughs> Agenda item number six, purchase of compressed natural gas CNG buses. Good evening. Staff is requesting board approval to award a contract to New Flyer of America for purchase of 15 each 40-foot compressed natural gas buses at a cost of $7,345,385. I presented this item during uh, last week's uh, board work session, so I'll recap the information that was provided then and, and then uh, uh, mention an update uh, to the presentation as well. The buses that we're looking to procure will be used to implement the planned June 2016 uh, expansion of the E route. The procurement will be completed using purchase options we received from Dallas Area Rapid Transit. And as an update to last week's presentation, we have received approval from the FTA to make use of the options that uh, Dallas has offered us. Um, with regard to New Flyer of America, we have a long-standing relationship with that company. Uh, we operate more than 200 buses built by New Flyer and they've performed very well for us. The funding for this procurement will be sourced from existing FTA grants that will require a 20% local match. So again, in summary, staff is requesting board authorization for the president and CEO to execute a contract with New Flyer of America for the purchase of 15 each 40 foot compressed natural gas buses at a total contract price of 7,345,000 $385, and I'll be happy to take any questions. Members, any questions? I'll just 
Bob, you have anything? Yeah. Just very quickly. Um, again, these new flyers are coming to us uh, by June 20, uh, 26 for the expansion of the E route. Yes, sir. We, we've got uh, we've got new flyer uh, on the hook and are pushing them to uh, to get a quick delivery. So uh, very, that's a very good thing that you uh, attached it to the Dallas Fort Worth uh, uh, contract. Uh, that's usually a, a less um, less time to wait for the the procurement to go through because uh, it's attached to an existing procurement for another agency. So when we work together like that, it uh, things go in a lot more fluid fashion. I do agree with that very much. So. Uh, New Flyer is actually a very, very good bus, and uh, it is out and tested, so I, I, I agree with the style of bus that we're using. And being CNG, it's a cleaner environment uh, bus, and it's also a quieter bus for the downtown area. So uh, very commendable. Thank you. And on that note. Members, any other questions or comments? Secretary Harrison, do we have a motion? I can tell that... You would like to make this motion. Yes, so. uh, the motion to approve the uh, contract for the new flyer purchase. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further question or comment? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Look forward to seeing those new buses soon. We get them on the way. So. Thank you. Thank you, Gary, for being so diligent on that process with that PI. Yes. yes. Yes, very much so. Very smart. All right, moving on to agenda item number seven, uh, President CEO performance evaluation. Vice Chairman, do we have a motion? Maybe you, maybe you have a resolution. Yes. Uh, in connection with uh, completion of the performance evaluation of the president and CEO as required under the terms of his contract, move that the Board of Trustees authorize additional compensation of $15,000 pursuant to Section 5 performance evaluation of the president and CEO employment agreement. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any further comment or question? Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Mr. Arndt, would you, a motion carries. Uh, Mr. Arndt, would you like to make any comments? Sure. First of all, I want to thank the board for putting this process together. I think it's a very helpful process. It will be uh, extremely helpful to me moving forward. I think it would be helpful for to anybody following me at some point in history. Uh, I know it's not a simple process. I know that in the industry that these processes are not common. And so uh, I think the uh, not only is it a betterment to me for a greater understanding of expectations, but uh, I, I believe the board probably benefited from the discussion as well. And uh, I thank you for the opportunity to serve via. This is a great community. We have many wonderful things ahead. I think we've done a great deal over the last year, uh, but I think we have even more exciting things in the offing as we move forward and identify the projects out of the uh, long range plan that we're updating. Uh, particularly the spring. So thank you very much for the opportunity. Well, thank you, Mr. Arndt. We certainly look forward to working with you and um, look forward to a great year. Uh, and to the board, thank you all very much. Uh, I am so proud to say that uh, during this evaluation, we had 100% board participation. So board members, congratulations. Uh, this is uh, certainly one of our responsibilities. Um, item number eight, Ms. Elder, do we have, any, uh, do we have anything on legal briefing? Okay. Well, I hesitate to go to agenda item number nine because uh, this is the, my first board meeting where I have a foot rest. Uh, <laughs> so my feet are not hanging. You and I, have, um, I can sit all the way back because I now have a little cushion that allows me to sit back. <laughs> so I, I'm very comfortable, I think. That we could <laughs> now you know why I always made the board meetings kind of go quickly because I was so uncomfortable, but I am enjoying this. Um, a very special thank you to Ms. Lauren Garcia who, um, who thought of getting me a foot rest. Um, do I have a motion for adjournment? So moved. Thank you. And we have a motion to second um, meeting. Uh, do, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion is here. Uh, meeting is hereby adjourned. Thank you all very much. Have a good evening and a safe uh, Halloween.